and welcome to this video about pinhole photography. Today we'll be using our engineering skills to make pinhole cameras using things that we might find in our recycling bins. Here are the things that you will need. A cylinder, like a post tube or a coffee tin. Aluminium. This can be from a drinks can. A pin or a needle. Scissors. Electrical tape. Photographic paper. Black paint. A brush. The first thing that you should do is to cut a hole into your cylinder. The hole should be around two to three centimeters square or rectangular. You should then paint your cylinder black inside. Make sure you have completely covered the inside. It is now time to make your pinhole. First, get your piece of aluminium, which is cut from a drinks can. Get your pin and turn the aluminium round underneath the pin. This will make a hole, which is very circular and neat. Once you have done this, hold your pinhole up to the light to make sure that light is going through the pinhole, as you can see here. Using your electrical tape, put the tape around the sides of the aluminium square. You can then put your square into the pinhole camera and stick it inside using the electrical tape. Your pinhole is now ready to go inside the camera. Make sure to stick your pinhole inside the camera really well and make sure that no light goes around the edges of the tape that you get a very clear pinhole photograph image. Then hold the camera up to the light to make sure that the pinhole is the only thing that is letting light into the camera. Now make a shutter using another piece of electrical tape. This is so that you control when light gets into the camera. So what I do is I cut out a piece of tape and then I make a tab on one of the ends 
so that I can easily open and shut the shutter. We are now ready to load the pinhole camera with photographic paper. To load your camera, you will need to either use a changing bag or use a dark room. So I'm now going to put my photographic paper into the camera. I am using Ilford Multigrade resin coated paper for this camera. You should cut up the photographic paper to fit exactly at the back of your pinhole camera. And you should make sure that the shiny emulsion side of the paper is facing the pinhole. Make sure that your camera lid is put on very firmly and tightly I also covered my lid with gaffer tape to make it extra light tight and you can also use aluminium foil. It is now time to take your pinhole camera outside and expose your image. Here is another angle of me loading the camera just so you can see exactly what I am doing. It is really important to make sure that the only light getting into your camera is through the pinhole. So double check that it's really firmly shut before taking it outside. Also, it's important to make sure that your shutter is completely closed before taking it outside. I took my pinhole camera for a journey to Windy Margate. I put the pinhole camera outside of the Margate School and exposed for 20 seconds in the shade. I used standard Ilford Multigrade paper developer, stop which was water and photographic fixer as I would usually do in the darkroom and here is my negative image which was exposed for 20 seconds. You put the paper in the developer for 2 minutes the stop or the wash for 30 seconds and then fix in rapid fix for 2 minutes before washing for 10 minutes and hanging up to dry. You can also use the Caffanol paper developer which was seen in my last video but this will take a long time to develop. You can then make a positive image by using Photoshop or using the paper negative process. I have a video on the paper negative process which you can see on my YouTube account. This video was supported by the Royal Academy of Engineering and was made in collaboration with Dr Leah Nanny Alkinsell at the University of Birmingham. This is the last video in the series of the Royal Academy of Engineering Engineering Sustainable Photographic Processes project. I hope you enjoyed the videos. If you want to see more, don't forget that you can like, subscribe or join my Patreon. Thank you for watching.